Hey everyone, back again now looking at the Kodiak Morph filter, which uh, initially when I heard about it, I was not excited at all. I really don't like those kind of formant, uh, vowel-y type of sounds. It's not anything I would ever use in my music, personally, so uh, I was kind of let down until I started playing with it a lot. And there's certain things you can do with it, including um, these very dense, kind of uh, weird ambient pads you can make with it by just throwing noise into it or what I think is the best part is this kind of tonal percussion that you can do and you can get really interesting polyrhythms happening uh, I'll show you that at the end of the video so please stick around for that because that one is uh, it's what I'm going to use it for I, I'll probably use this technique in multiple songs tweaking them differently uh, it's a staple of what I like to do now at this point so what do we have? Well, I've got a uh, blank instance here again. Imagine that. And what I'm going to do is throw in an oscillator. I think I'll use the nice simple multi-wave because this will give me both uh, like a square wave and a noise. Come on. Good Lord. And then let's, <laughs> let's get the Kodiak here. Um, if I could just make it so like this populated and, and looked all nice, I'd be a happy man. All right. So lots of ins. What is it? It's basically three uh, filters, filter banks. Uh, and these are tuned specifically to emulate chords or vowels. So what you have, you have multiple inputs. You also have a pitch input. You can actually key track this thing and play it uh, kind of like an instrument. It's pretty, pretty dope. FM input and then your mods, of course. So let's just route the pitch in and we'll come into one. I don't really think it matters. I haven't noticed a difference. So if anyone knows better, please correct me and comment. Um, but whether I go one, two or three and it didn't seem to make a difference in this scenario, at least. Okay, so. <laughs> that's that's not a sound I'm into. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, this reminds me of um, Family Guy. Remember that old old episode from early on with the Kool Aid Man? See of murder in the first degree. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh yeah! <laughs> I loved it. Anyway, so it's very good at this kind of thing, right? And you are basically scrolling through these different slots and you can create less slots or up to nine. So you can get really complex. And automate this all over the place or use an LFO to uh, kind of uh, manipulate this. Uh, you can just come into mod A and B and use the rotate and the radius to kind of jump around. I find a uh, like a random noise, uh, like the rounds LFO, which is synced, and it will just kind of bounce around. That's a really good one for that. So let's take it down to like three slots. And uh, you can see here, you can just kind of swap these out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very simple. Okay. On the other hand, you can also use like these tune chords. Like, and you can make a combination of that. Or if you don't like what any of that does, you can just come in here and edit. So per slot, you can see you have a couple options. You can do it by key, by actual note value, or by frequency. So you can come in here and actually customize your own kind of chords and formants. And then, uh, for instance, I'll just hit save and save that as user one. Now every time I can come back and use that again. Okay. So really use it for that scenario. It's going to give you exactly what you want. A nice sharp kind of thing. Another scenario you can do is let's throw noise into it. Okay. Now it can be kind of cool for that. You have three different modes, two pole, four pole, and eight pole. Now this eight pole, First of all, notice that if I would have shown you with the sawtooth, you would have seen that uh, without the resonance turned up, it's not really getting the effect you would want. Um, so using this eight pole, you can make amazing, 
almost like a self-oscillating filter. You know, so I would put it like a delay and a reverb on it and make just some trippy kind of stuff like that. Tilt, you can kind of uh, tilt it towards the EQ side, whether it's more low or high end kind of affected. You can kind of do a manual octave each way pitch right here, throw some FM into it, take another oscillator, run it into it, you get nutty results. Uh, and then a high and low boost, basically an EQ boost in case you need to accentuate something. Okay, so really cool like that, you get the idea, okay? Now, where does it get more fun? Well, uh, let me close this one out. Okay, let's actually come in and load. I think I made an ensemble here before. Um, let me load it up here. Users, what did I call this one? Kodiak something. Rezo filter percussor, because I'm so slick with these names. Okay, look at this beast. What do we got going on here? Ooh. So now what I've done, let's come in and edit out and see what this thing entails. Okay, here's a great reason to use these uh, LPGs, the West Coast LPGs, which is basically a filter and a VCA in one. Uh, I came out, this is kind of redundant, actually, I didn't need to really use the gates and triggers. I could have just came gate messages out which are just basically going here and then here you can, the reason I did it is you can kind of adjust the level and how much intensity, but these are coming in the gates from the clock divider are coming into the morph filter. And what this is going to do is going to kind of ping off, uh, those filters, those, those, uh, filter banks, at which point, again, I kind of just tune them haphazardly. You can see here until I, I found something I liked, uh, what else is coming out? So this is just coming out into each of the three LPGs. So each filter bank is gonna sound somewhat different and then they're all each controlled by their own low pass gate. And just choosing the flavor of the gate, you can get some really cool different options. So here we have FM coming in from both the flip gen and the duality going into a crossfader, at which point now I can switch between them and get different flavors of FM. Or a mix of them. And what's cool about it is mess with this clock divider. So this is like hitting every third, second, and eight. So you can get some really cool kind of percussive elements. I highly recommend messing around with it for that. Uh, I'm gonna get tons of views out of it for that. So those are the two main options to use it with. Have fun with it. Uh, and we'll look at the sequencers next. Cheers.